Hello, good morning, dear children. I am Manoj Chauhan, Physics Faculty from Convent of Jesus Mary. Dear children, in this series, in uh, this particular lecture, I am going to discuss very important questions, which is based on the motion in a plane. I mean to say two-dimensional motion. In this series, I am solving question number 10. Some of the questions are already solved in the live class. Okay. So there are some typical questions which I am going to discuss. And rest of the question you can revise. If you are getting any doubt, you can directly put your question in a doubt session. Okay. So let's see. Now, what is the question? Let me read it. On an open ground, motorist follows a track that turns to his left by angle of 60 degree. After every 500 meter, starting from given turn, specify the displacement of the motorist at the third, sixth, and eighth turn. Compare the magnitude of displacement and total path length covered by the motorist in his cage. Okay, dear student. Let's see how to understand it. Suppose that initially, I will take a line over here. This is the origin. From the origin, a motor is started. Origin is suppose that O. And uh, it is given 500 meters. Now, left turn with 60 degree. What is the meaning of left turn? It means with 60 degree, turn is this side. Left means this is the left turn. Okay. And this is the left, left turn. This 60 degree. It means angle. This angle is 60 degree. And again, 500 meter is this particular turn. Dear children, you know, when there is a equal side and angle is 60 degree, okay? If uh, all sides inclined with angle 60 degree, again, left turn like this, you can say by this way, again, left turn with 60 degree. Okay? So, it follow hexagon. Shape is hexagon, remember. Is hexagon. Regular hexagon, you can say by this way. If this is a regular hexagon, I must draw it, okay, according to indication of this angle. This is the regular hexagon. All right. Now, that this is the regular hexagon, I will take another arrow over here. By this way. One, two, three, four. Okay, let me draw it by other way. Here, in this particular case, hexagon is going up. Okay, that's why I must draw over here, by simple way. Here only, simple one. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And this one. Let this is the regular hexagon. Okay, you can draw. And initially, let's start from O. This is A, this is B, this is C, this is D, and this is E. Okay, this is the situation. You must draw by this way. All right. Let's see. What is the condition which is given in particular? That will be 60 degree left on in each incline. Okay, that is also 60 degree. In each incline, you'll get 60 degree. It means this is a regular hexagon. Each side is 500 meter, as I already told you over here. You need to find out the displacement of motorist in third. Let's see in third. Okay, now I will do one thing. I will take it away. Because we already know this thing. All right, let's see dear children, how to solve it. First thing which we want to calculate, that is displacement and path length at third turn. So I will put here third turn. 
Where is third term? This is the first one. This is second and this is third term. So directly you need to find out the displacement and distance in third term. Okay. So this is the distance or displacement. Can you see carefully, dear children, in case of regular hexagon, you have the equal sides from the center, equal distance from the center because each having 60 degree. That's why this will be 500 and this will be also 500. Total displacement, I am putting it by S, which is equal to 500 plus 500. Answer will be 1000 meters. So 1000 meter is the displacement of the this particular motorist after third turn. Similarly, how will you calculate the path length? Path length is distance. I will denote it by D. Distance means this one, this one, and this one. That will be 500 plus 500 plus 500 plus 500. That will be 1500 meters. But according to question, you need to compare the magnitude of displacement or distance. Then we will do one thing. Comparison means you just divide it, displacement upon distance. We will get 1000 upon 1500. That will be 2 upon 3. So we can easily conclude that displacement in this particular case is 2 by 3 of path length, I mean to say distance. So this is the answer of first part. Dear children, after it is asked the third and sixth, so I will write second thing here. That is, after sixth turn, you need to find out the displacement or distance. So let's see after sixth turn, where is the sixth turn? Just see, three, four, five, six. It means motorist is reaching at the original position from where he started. If it is reaches at the original position, obviously displacement will be zero. But what about the distance? Distance between six sides are there, each is 500. Then I must write that will be 3000 meters. Okay. If you compare this to your children, you can write easily displacement upon distance is zero upon uh, 3000. That will be zero. I mean to say displacement and distance have no comparison over here. Okay. Third case of the question, you need to find out the distance or displacement in eighth turn, dear children. Let's see where is eighth turn for you. Eighth turn is here. One, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. This is called eighth turn. Eighth turn. Now, directly you need to find out the displacement between initial position to the final position, that is eighth turn at this particular position B. Now you need to find out. You have different way to solve it. You can solve it by the cosine law. You can solve it by the triangle law. Simply you can draw it mathematically even. If total angle is 60 degree, this angle will be 30 degree. And this side you can calculate and it is twice of it. I will do other diagram over here so that it become easy to calculate. Let this is the magnified diagram. This thing we want to calculate displacement. Okay, I must draw the perpendicular here. You know this is 500 and this is 30 degree. Then it become 500 if this is base upon hypotenuse into cos 30 degree. Okay, so why this way you can calculate the displacement in eighth turn. So displacement in eighth turn, seven, and this was eighth or seven, sixth. Sorry, I must see. Yeah, eighth turn. That will be twice of this. Let this is S1, this is S2. You have to uh, initial to final position. This is the initial, this is the final. What is displacement? Shortest path or straight path between initial and final position. That will be 500. Root 3 is 3 by 2. Always. Okay. Into 2 because it is 2 time. Now you can solve it. That will be uh, when you solve it 4, 5. It will become 2, 2 will cancel out and you have 500 root 3 meters. This is the displacement. When you talk about the distance here, distance will be 8 fives are 40, that will be 4000 meters. When you compare displacement with the distance, that will be root 3 by 8. I mean to say displacement is root 3 by 8 times the distance in this particular case. This is the solution of this question. This question is very interesting to calculate the displacement or distance.
try it by yourself at least twice or once so that you can get the proper concept okay now dear children we have another question here which is based on river and boat problem okay let me draw its diagram first i want to read it a man can swim with a speed 4 km per hour Let's take the color now 4 km per hour in still water how long does it take to cross the river 1 km wide if the river flows steadily steadily means constant rate that is 3 km per hour and he makes his strokes normal this is the main thing normal to the river current how far does the river as he go when he reaches the other bank okay dear children i will take a, a river here let this is the river its width is given how much is the width of river that is one kilometer all right so one kilometer means thousand meter you can say by this way right now i'm writing one kilometer now let this is the point from where swimmer wanted to reach at point b and uh, make a stroke perpendicular to the river current normal this is i mean to say velocity of the swimmer you know velocity of river is suppose that this i can vectorially show by this way this is velocity of the river so where is the resultant of these two resultant of these two is somewhere like that it means direction of the resultant velocity is this direction and this is called drift i already explained this thing this is called drift and river current is also called drift current sometime okay so why this way you can calculate you have various way to solve it but this is the easier one okay let's see how to solve it what is the velocity of swimmer in still water that will be 4 km per hour and what is the velocity of uh, river or drift here that will be 3 km per hour all right now first thing you need to find out the time time of crossing so right now time of crossing is let width of the river is d so d upon velocity of the swimmer simply i can write in still water okay perpendicular so i told you the formula cos 0 degree also here so d upon directly you can put ds that will be uh, that will be d is what d is 1 kilometer and this is 4 1 by 4 1 by 4 r and in minutes that will be 15 fourths are 16 that's why 15 minutes is the answer Dear yes, children, you have various ways to understand it. The master formula which I have told you, uh, uh, time of crossing, that was BBR cos theta. You know this thing, no? BBR, velocity of the boat with respect to river. Here it is the velocity of the swimmer with respect to the river. Okay, that's why. Why we are taking cos zero degree here? Because it is going perpendicular. Angle we have taken in the concept this side. That's why theta is zero degree when it is perpendicular. Now you need to calculate the drift. Okay, because it is given how far down the river go. I mean to say you need to calculate the drift, this value. Rather than reaching at point B, it is reaching at point C. That's why how far down means drift you need to calculate. That is drift velocity. What is drift velocity? That is the river velocity into time of crossing. We already know this thing. Okay, how to get this formula? So what is VR here? What is VR in this direction? That is given. VR is given that is 3 into time of crossing is 1 by 4. That will be 3 by 4 kilometers. And you want to find out in meter that will be 750 meters. So this is the drift. Swimmer is finally reaches at point C down with 750 meter x axis direction. But time of crossing is 15 minutes to reach at point C. Remember this thing, this is important. All right. Now, from NCRT, I will take another question here, dear children. Let this is the one more question here. This question I want to solve, question number 16. Okay, this is very interesting or good question. I hope you will like this. A cricketer can throw a ball to maximum horizontal distance. What is maximum horizontal distance? That is maximum range in origin. Projectile motion. That will be 100 meters. And that can be achieved only if theta is 45 degree. You know this thing. Okay. This can be achieved only when theta is, I mean to say 45 degree. R maximum. What is R maximum, dear children? 
So we know the formula for maximum in projectile that is u square upon 2 or u square upon g simply. Okay, so what is our maximum? That is 100. That will, I will put equation 1. Our maximum is 100, which is equal to u square upon g. Suppose that you have thrown the object with some initial velocity at an angle of 45 degree. Obviously, it will follow the path like that. This is called horizontal range, which is given 100 meter here. All right. Now, what is the demand of question? How much high above the ground can cricketer throw the same ball? So you need to find out the maximum height. Cricketer can throw the same ball up to maximum height only if he throw the ball with the angle 90 degree to the ground. Okay. So let this is the initial velocity. It will go up to the maximum height then come back. So I want to calculate the maximum height here. So what is the maximum height that, that is u square upon 2g? Okay, why? Because formula of maximum height is u square sine square theta upon 2g. When you put theta 90 degree here, sine 90 will be 1, you will get u square upon g. So I want to calculate the maximum height, dear children, here. How do you calculate the maximum height? That is u square upon 2g. Can I write by this way 1 upon 2 u square upon g? u square upon g we just now calculated, that is 100. Now you will get the maximum height here that will be equivalent to u square by g is 100 upon 2 so 100 upon 2 that will be 50 meters for future you can directly remember this trick if you are throwing any object in the horizontal direction which is called maximum range x maximum height will be x by 2 simple if horizontal range is x maximum height will be x by 2 I mean to say r by 2. This formula directly you can remember in future. h is equal to r by 2. Because you will get this formula in various competitive exams already come. So this is the shortcut trick you should remember for the future. So dear children, these questions I have solved today. Tomorrow I will solve some more questions. And day after tomorrow you have the live session. If you have any doubt, you can put your question over there. And try to solve other questions by yourself. I have just picked out some most important question which will give you the real concept and rest of the things you can discuss by yourself okay and uh, i mean to say if you are getting any query you can you can send it to me all right so that i can send you the perfect solution and after that i'll give you the assignments which is based on the one dimension motion as well as the uh, projectile motion okay in live session we will do newton's law of motion and uh, during that time, a point of time, in first 10 minutes, you must put your query so that I can solve well in time. Thank you very much once again. Thank you.